Welcome back to Show Academy. This is the plot of graph question. It's one fixed question in Paper 6 Physics. Actually, it's a gift of four marks to any student who knows the mark points and how to hit them directly. Let's train on the tips for plotting a graph like a pro. In every physics graph question, the examiner is looking for exactly four things. Correct labels, suitable scale, precise plotting, smart best fit line. Let's hit every mark, straight to it. Step 1. Axes labels. Here, what's expected from you is label both axes with the correct quantity and unit. In this format, quantity, then unit in brackets. Example, time in seconds, voltage in volts. Now here's the easy point. You don't need to think which variable goes on the x-axis and which on the y-axis. The question will say it. Just follow the instruction. If you label the wrong side, no mark. If you write no unit, no mark. Example. He asks you to plot a graph of load in newtons on the y-axis against extension in centimeters on the x-axis. Start both axes at the origin, 0, 0. Draw the best fit line. So, on your plotting area, you draw the y-axis upright and the x-axis flat. Draw big, use all the area. Always remember, tiny graphs equals tiny marks. And always use pencil. Then all you do is drop the labels and units. Load in newtons goes on the y-axis. Extension in centimeters goes on the x-axis. That's it. First mark done. Step 2. Scaling. Use a suitable scale to fit the data properly. How to scale? First, each axis must have its own sensible, consistent scale. Second, the data must be spread out, filling at least half the grid or three large squares. That's your second mark. Third, the scale must use regular intervals, like 1, 2, 5, or 10. Not weird jumps. Now how do you choose and apply a good scale? Step 1. Look at the range of your data. Find the smallest and largest numbers on each axis. Step 2. Count how many big squares you have on the grid. Each big square equals 10 small squares. Step 3. Divide the range by the number of big squares. That gives you a scale that spreads the data over at least half your axis length. Step 4. Use clean intervals. Avoid strange jumps. Let's practice. Suppose that you were given this data. Extension. 0, 2, 5, 7, 8, 10 centimeters. Load. 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1 newton. Now, your x-axis is for extension in centimeters, and your y-axis is for load in newtons. That's already told to you in the question. Let's say the x-axis goes from 0 to 10 centimeters. You count how many big squares you have. For example, 5 big squares. So you can choose a clean scale. 1 big square equals 2 centimeters. That means one small square equals 0 0.2 centimeters. Now on the y-axis, your load goes from 0 to 1 newtons. Again, you have five big squares, so you pick. One big square equals 0 0.2 newtons, which means one small square equals 0 0.02 newtons. Got it? Common mistakes? Using different jumps between marks. Skipping zero. Starting too far from the edge. Using random intervals. Step three, precise plots. What does precise plots mean? Each point is placed exactly in the right position, within plus or minus half a small square. Let's now plot the first point. Extension equals 2 centimeters. Load equals 0 0.2 newtons. On the x-axis, 2. On the y-axis, 0 0.2. Put a tiny cross exactly at that intersection. That's a precise plot. You repeat that for each point. 5 and 0 0.4. 7 and 0 0.6, 8 and 0 0.2, 10 and 1. So these are dots plotted precisely, no estimated dots, no floating somewhere close enough, no fat marks. Use a sharp pencil. Mark with a small cross or a neat ring dot. And that's the third mark. Step 4, best fit line. What is a best fit line? It's a smooth line that shows the overall trend of your plotted data. It doesn't have to go through every point, but it must follow the general pattern. How to draw it. First, check the trend. Are your points going up? That's a positive slope. Going down? That's negative. Straight line or curve? Second, if a point is clearly off pattern, that's an outlier. Just circle it once and ignore it when drawing your line. 
Third, draw a thin, smooth, continuous line. If it's a straight pattern, use a ruler. Balance it, some points above, some below. Don't just connect two dots. Your line might pass through all, some, or none of the points. That's okay. If it's curved, draw a smooth single curve that follows the general shape of the points. Now look at your plotted points. What do you see? There's a clear upward trend, except for one point. That dot at 8 centimeters looks way too low. It doesn't follow the pattern. That's an outlier. So what do you do? You circle it once, one clean circle. That tells the examiner, I spotted the outlier. I'm not using it in my line. Now place your ruler across the rest of the points. Adjust it until the line balances. Some points above, some below. Then draw a thin, neat, straight line through the trend. Don't press hard. Don't go over it twice. And don't force it through zero unless the data supports it. That's your trend. That's your judgment. And that's your fourth mark done. Quick recap. Labels with correct units. Follow instructions, not logic. Scale, clear and even. Points, sharp and precise. Line, smooth and best fit. That's the game. Four moves, four marks. Practice now with real papers. Follow this and the marks are yours. See you next time.